Trust is core to our mission because our mission is to service the financial security of the men and women that serve this great country. And therefore, in order to provide um, the kind of security that they would expect day in and day out, uh, that's what helps us earn their trust and keep their trust. Security alone isn't uh, adequate for the wide adoption of cloud services because it's really an enabler for trust. Um, if security is used to build trust in cloud services, in the providers that are providing the services, uh, my belief is that you'll see a far greater adoption of cloud services. The difference I would see between security and trust is security is something that we have to provide to our members to ensure that we're helping meet their financial needs. Trust is something that we earn by being able to provide that high level of security. When there's a deficit of trust with our customers, it makes doing business incredibly difficult. Um, bottom line is if our customers don't trust you, they're not going to deposit their money with you, they're not going to do transactions or business with you. A lot of people have lost trust in financial institutions, in particular large banks. And so it's very important that it stays core to our mission, that we provide the highest level of security in order to maintain our members' trust. Uh, our customers' uh, expectations are definitely increasing when it comes to uh, their expectations of how we protect their data. They know that there are threats that are increasing, and in, both in complexity um, and, and just in terms of sheer volume, and they expect us to put the proper mechanisms to protect their data and maintain that high level of trust of us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Executive Chairman Verisign, Jim Bidzos. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon. Pleasure to be here again at the RSA conference. As many of you know, in uh, 1991, I organized the first RSA conference, and we came to talk about and demonstrate cutting-edge security. And over those 20 years, we've seen an explosion of threats. There were viruses, identity theft, malware, denial-of-service attacks, hijacked machines, botnets, and a lot more. And there, were a corresponding, there was a corresponding explosion of security solutions. Um, all you have to do is look at the exhibit hall to see what I'm talking about. Now, all of them can, can reduce risk, but they've also overwhelmed and confused and sometimes frustrated users. In fact, some of these security tools that we offer are nearing the point of negative returns. It's time we th start thinking about security as only part of the solution and what our users need from us. So let's take a look at it from a user's point of view. Today, they're faced with pop-ups, all sorts of security procedures that were designed to make them feel more secure, but in fact, may simply frustrate them and make them wonder if the internet is, quote, safe. And in fact, the question, can you trust the internet, answered in survey after survey, indicates that we really aren't quite there yet. That in fact, uh, a lot of the solutions that we're providing are the cause of this. People see these solutions, they're cumbersome, they get in their way, they have to deal with them, and they're wondering if these security products are indicative of, of the underlying threat. Sort of like driving through a neighborhood with a whole bunch of warnings about the high crime area you're about to enter. Uh, you may feel a little bit safer seeing a lot of police cars, but you wonder if you can really trust the experience of driving through there. So let me um, go back in time a little bit and try to, dry, try to draw a straight line from the period of uh, the 70s and the 80s between the founders of, um, of the RSA company, Diffie Hellman, Ravesh Shamir, and Adelman, and all the pioneers in public key cryptography and today. One thing that all of them did in their papers, they all sort of had uh, uh, an introduction to their, their scientific papers that invented a lot of the technology that's represented in products of companies here today. Uh, they all said something to the effect of, we're, we're moving to uh, a sort of a, a cyber community. And uh, they all talked about the need for protecting digital information. So think of it this way. There's a simple way to think about this that's maybe a little technical, but not too much. They were describing a world in which basically most of our lives and, and all the data that we deal with is digital. And in a world where all that digital data exists, you'll reach a point where you can't trust that data unless there's a reason to. That reason is called a digital signature. You trust information because it's got a digital signature on it. So di digital data may have no value. There, there'll come a day when there's no value associated with digital data unless it has a digital signature attached to it. Well, a digital signature doesn't really have any value unless there's a certificate associated with it, sort of like a signature that doesn't have any value unless it's notarized. And a certificate doesn't really have any value 
unless that certificate itself is validated. Um, a useful analogy here would be, you know, if you were an online merchant uh, selling T-shirts, books, or CDs, would you take a credit card online from someone without bothering to determine if it's valid or if it's been revoked or hotlisted? Um, of course you wouldn't. So fast forward a little bit, go to 1995. A couple of really interesting things happened in 1995. Uh, one was that Microsoft and Netscape commercialized browsers and you know, the internet, which was a little difficult for most people to use, became the World Wide Web and e-commerce came along. And fortunately at that time, uh, there was some infrastructure available and some technology available and it got built into those browsers and there was just enough security infrastructure, uh, SSL in fact, which was just the right protocol at just the right time to let e-commerce flourish. And there were really two questions that people were asking at that time. If I'm gonna go online and shop and actually conduct commerce, I'm concerned about a couple of things. Uh, I'm concerned about whether I'm talking to the right party that I think I'm talking to. Is it really them at the other end of this transaction? And they're also saying, is my information protected as it moves to them? Is it uh, encrypted? Is it uh, protected from people who might be eavesdropping or stealing it? And SSL answered those two questions. It was just the right sort of security infrastructure at the right time. And it worked really well, and I think it provided a sound basis for, for e-commerce security and does so even today. But today, you know, consumers have many more questions. They're not just asking, who am I talking to and is my data safe? Uh, they're asking questions like, uh, if I click on this, uh, will I get some malware? Will I, will I get infected? Will I have a virus? Uh, is this site safe to go to? Um, how did all that money get into those Nigerian banks in the first place? Uh, questions like that that they're asking themselves. Uh, so at any rate, um, every day people are facing these threats and I think again it leads us back to that, that, that survey result that says a lot of people are not comfortable putting private information on the internet. Now CIOs and CTOs aren't faring a whole lot better. Um, they're also struggling with some of the same trust questions. Today, they put together their networks in you know, what might be a less than seamless sort of collection of point security products and other defensive measures and, and wonder what they've missed and wonder my, what might be going on in their network and whether or not some malware has managed to get in. Um, everybody here at this conference has talked about cloud computing, so there's you know, no need for me to, to beat it up and say we have to trust the cloud before we use it. But I can tell you that most corporations, and certainly the ones that are public companies, are going to have directors and auditors who are going to insist that there's some level of trust um, before they start committing corporate data, uh, regardless of what the economic benefits are. So we have, a, I think, so a lot of work to do before we get there, but the economics are very compelling. I think we will get there, but we need to develop some trust first. So basically, consumers and businesses have a, an issue with trust. Um, they want to trust the internet, but they're not really sure if they can. Another thing we really need to focus on is simplicity. We've gotten to the point where there's so much complexity out there that it introduces new, new risks. Uh, computer security practitioners know and have known for a long time that complexity equals risk. The more complex a system, the more places there are where exploits can, can be brought in. So, what we need to do is deliver not just security, but trust. So security is critical, and good leading edge security has to underlie any trust proposition, but security alone does not equal trust. So let's explore this idea. I have uh, two people with me today to help us do this. Uh, from the network operator's perspective, I have Ken Silva, who's VeriSign's chief technology officer, who operates quite a large network, and you'll see some interesting statistics about that network in a minute and it's also a network that's under constant attack in ways you, you may not be aware of. And after Ken, we'll hear from Fran Roche, and Fran is our Senior Vice President of Business Authentication. Fran has a really deep understanding of the relationship between merchants and consumers, what that trust relationship looks like today, what it, what it really needs to look like in order for e-commerce to grow beyond where it is today. As some of you may be wondering where our CEO, Mark McLaughlin, is. He has a good excuse not to be here. He and his wife welcomed a new baby last Friday, so Mark is home with the family in Virginia. So uh, let me now bring up Ken Silva. Ken? Thanks, Jim. Um, 
when we found out Mark couldn't be here, Jim called me up and said, uh, hey, I, I need for you to do me a favor. We, uh, I need for you to